help. Affirmative, Dave. I read you. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. And I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. Where the hell did you get that idea, Hal? Dave, although you took very thorough precautions in the pod against my hearing you, I could see your lips move. All right, Hal. I'll go in through the emergency airlock. Without your space helmet, Dave, you're going to find that rather difficult. Hal, I won't argue with you anymore. Open the doors. Dave, this conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part 11 of my 2001 Discovery build. Uh, coming down to the wire here, making a lot of progress, uh, working to get this completed by the end of May so I can take it to Wonderfest uh, coming up in uh, June the 2nd. Uh, so a lot of good progress. Uh, I completed the, um, the pod bay photo etch and interior and started working on the lighting with it. Came up with a few ideas for the base uh, and made some changes there. So... Um, let me go ahead and show you what I got accomplished. Uh, very excited about how this is turning out. All right, let's take a look. All right, so uh, using more of the uh, Shapeways 3D printed figures, I, um, I created the little hanging astronaut uh, suits out there. Uh, actually this came with three of them but for my purposes I'm only using one because uh, in the scene that I'm kind of recreating somewhat Dave Bowman has left the ship. Uh, Frank Poole is outside the ship in the claws of the pod in his yellow spacesuit. Uh, Dave Bowman has the red spacesuit but without his helmet and, um, and the blue one is the only one remaining hanging in the pod bay which we get a lot of shots of because they're focusing on the, the red helmet by itself to give you the idea that he doesn't have his helmet. So um, what I did was um, I only wanted the helmet. <laughs> it's like to face this poor little guy. So uh, I took one of the other figures and I painted the helmet only and detailed it as I wanted to be. Let it dry overnight and then I just snipped it off using a... Well actually I just sat on a flat surface and used a nice exacto knife to cut it off carefully. And um, I did the same with the blue one, <coughs> excuse me, although I did the suit and the helmet separately so that I could have them separated. And uh, I painted the little um, framework that comes in the photo etch set and put a little flat base on it to be able to glue it down. And then I glued those uh, elements onto there. So I think it turned out really nicely. So I have the, the blue suit on the right and it's separated from its helmet. And I have the red helmet on the left there, one that Dave Bowman left behind. All right, so this is gonna be the last detail for the pod bay that I need to glue inside. And then I'll be ready to start uh, folding that up and getting it put together and then looking at some lighting. Okay, all right, and here uh, are the, um, the space suits hanging on the rack, uh, glued onto the floor. And uh, I made a correction from what I showed earlier. That red helmet is actually on the left side. The center is empty. That's where the yellow spacesuit goes. Uh, and that's thanks to Mike Martin. Um, I'm on a, fa a, a Facebook channel for building the 2001 uh, Discovery uh, Tips and Tricks. 
and uh, he had caught that and made a suggestion. So thanks a lot, Mike. Appreciate it. Uh, I was able to fix that before I put it into the uh, into the kit. All right. So uh, that is looking really awesome. And uh, I also got a doll coat on that little control panel, so I dolled down the decal and sealed it in as well. Uh, I definitely recommend that for any of the decals uh, so that they don't peel off on you later. And uh, that would be regretful. All right. All right, so a little final detail that I added onto the interior before I get ready to close it up is I put a, um, a little tiny SMD. It's a, it's a Pico red LED on the back of this for the control panel, and I glued it down with some super glue, put some 5 minute epoxy over it, and painted it black. And here is how it looks. All right, so it's a little washed out, but it's a nice bright red, really cool. That little control panel right there. And I just have a little hole through it to show the light through, and I put the decal from the HDA Model Works set onto it, and it's translucent, so it, it glows through. So that's pretty cool. So that'll be one more light that I have in the, um, in the pod bay here. All right, so I just need to put some flat coat over top of that decal and let it dry, and then I'll be ready to start putting this together. All right. All right, so I'm working on some ideas for the base uh, that the ship is gonna go on. And initially I had shown a big wooden plank that I showed it on its stand. And that was the basic idea I started with. Uh, what I want to do is have a um, kind of a wraparound space scene. So I uh, played with a few ideas and I made a little test shot. And um, just use like Photoshop to take pictures of Jupiter and its moons and a space background. And um, put them into a really long four foot banner and uh, and there's a there's a uh, print shop nearby here they will print it out in that in that format which is basically four feet long and about a foot a foot high so and this is on some some banner paper it's sort of like a vinyl uh, but it's not shiny it's flat which is nice so um, so this is the initial test that I wanted to do and it's going to be curved so it kind of in, wraps around the ship sort of like a 90 degree curve like this, that kind of thing. So what, um, what I'm gonna have to do then is change my idea of the base because the wood would have to be much, much wider. Uh, the board I did ori originally was only four inches wide and if I did another one four inches tall, it's still not gonna be big enough. I need about eight inches because when it curves, I'm gonna have to be able to get the ship in that curve and it's gonna have a lot less space. So um, I kind of abandoned the idea of the wood for something that's going to be a lot lighter. And I came up with this, um, this foam, and it's designed for insulation on, insulation, sorry, on your home. And it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice thick, it's about an inch thick, and it's a nice solid foam. It's easy to work with. And uh, you can glue it together uh, with um, glue that they make. It's kind of like liquid nails. You put it in one of those uh, caulk guns and you just squirt it on, it dries pretty pretty solidly. So I already glued these two pieces together. There you go, and there it is initially. And, uh, and it's also very light. It's kind of the main reason. It's easy to work with. It can be cut easily with just like an X-Acto knife. I don't have to worry about using a saw or anything like that. And, um, and it's easy to handle because this thing's gonna be four feet long when I'm done. So this section is two feet long. And you can see it's um, it's a 90 degree angle. And so I actually made this one nine inches and this one eight inches because this overlaps by an inch obviously so that the interior is eight by eight. And I kind of figured out that eight by eight is the right, are the right dimensions in order to have a curved section that's about a foot. It's about 12 inches, which is what I'm looking for. Um, and then what I'm doing now, uh, when I'm done, I'll have two of these back to back and they'll be secured. So what I've done is I've made some other pieces. Uh, excuse me a second. Sorry about that, I had to sneeze. <laughs> um, so I made these triangular sections that are going to go this way. And then they're going to be curved out so they can accommodate the curved space background. 
And this is pretty much the curve that I came up with. All right, and then um, I have four of these so far. And one of them I've already cut out and I'll show you what that looks like. That's where I kind of got the idea for the curve. All right, so there you go. So there's a nice curved interior. And you're not gonna see any of this foam, by the way. It's, it's gonna be all covered. So from the top of this all the way down to probably close to the edge, you're gonna have this whole thing, the whole interior of this is gonna have that curved space background. It's a four foot banner. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll paint the top of it black and there are this, the, the surrounding parts. Uh, I'm still gonna come up with something on the front to smooth that out. Maybe put like some kind of plastic styrene. I may put something on it like 2001 A Space Odyssey. We'll see. Uh, or I may just leave the whole thing black. So it just looks like a big space scene and the, the Discovery will be suspended from its bases and they'll be painted black and then the, the rod will go down through the, the banner, just a little hole, just big enough, and they'll be glued underneath on the foam board, the three connections. So I'll put those on and figure out where they're gonna go and put the hole through the banner before I put the banner on. Um, and then what you're gonna have, what I'm gonna have is this whole area right here that I can put the, um, the Discovery into. I'll just show you because the the dome and the back are about the widest pieces, so it'll be sitting something like this. Obviously closer towards the front, but so this will be a little close to that, but it should be fine. In fact, I could even take it out like this and put the, the stands pretty much in the center of this thing, and this will be far enough away, maybe like a half an inch away from that banner. So it's not actually touching it. And of course the spine will be just in the middle so it won't be near it. I'll have to measure it too, make sure that the back propulsion unit works as well. All right, so that's uh, kind of where I'm sitting on this and um, working to get that completed. Uh, and then once all these are in, there'll be four for this one, four for the other one, probably something. One of them's gonna overlap like right here over the two sides once I glue them together. <clears throat> then. Um, I just have some some poster not board but like some poster paper like the thicker paper that's black and that I will cut out into pieces that will just glue right up here and they'll they'll be the first base so that'll just all be glued right down through here as the base and once I do that for the whole piece and get it all painted the last thing I'll do is glue on the um, the space background that I'll have finished and I'm still kind of playing with the idea of how I'm going to do this. I don't know if I want Jupiter quite that big because it's, I want to get the idea that it's off in the distance, that the, the Discovery is heading towards it. So this will be done at this end and the Discovery will be head, facing this end with the command sphere down here at the end. So I may make that a little smaller, make the, the plan, the moon's a little more prominent, like it's off in the distance and we're coming towards it. So, okay. All right, but that's coming together really nicely. And uh, I think that'll be pretty cool. I'm not gonna have any kind of lighting or anything on this, this uh, base other than at the one end, <clears throat> I will have the little mini pod that's lit up with the pole down inside of it and wire that through and have probably the compartment in the back for the battery and a switch for it, or possibly something in the front, we'll see. Um, just so I can turn that on. But otherwise, the Discovery is independently powered by its own battery, so it doesn't need to have any power source at all. So, okay, great. So let me work on this some more, and, I'll sh and we'll hopefully get this uh, ready to go as well. Okay, so here's a quick test as well of the, um, the propulsion unit. So same thing. I have plenty of room to be able to do that. If I line it up, and it's hard to tell from the angles that I'm filming it here, but if I line it up so that it's even this little bump here is lined up at the edge, I still got plenty of room. Sorry about that. Yeah. So it's it's not close to that. It's a good inch or inch and a half away. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this fairly low. I'm going to cut those rods down a bit because they're way too high. 
I'm not going to have it sitting way up here. I'm going to have it sitting down pretty much in the center of the space scene. So when you look at it from the side, you're going to see just space behind it. And that's kind of the idea. And it's going to envelop it. And then with the black, uh, with painting the um, metal tubes black that support it, you're not really going to see them. The only part that's going to be unusual is the, the pieces that connect it. I'm going to have to paint those kind of a gray to match in. So they might be visible a little bit, but I'll kind of blend those in as well. All right. All right, so here's a, um, a test of my base. I had the um, image printed out, and this is just half of it. There's another half that's the same length. This is about two feet long by a foot in length. And I have it curved onto the base. It's not glued down right now. It's just sitting in there, as you can see. But that's kind of the general idea of it. It will be curved onto those end pieces that I have. Oh, sorry. There you go. So you can see how it's it's curved into that, and then the um, the ship model will fit right into here in this curved section. The bases will go down into it, and there'll be holes put through this through this piece. All right. And then obviously I'll paint this black or put something over it like styrene and the same with on the top. So that'll all be black. Okay, so that's coming along well. Um, the test shot, I might have made the colors a bit too bright, but I'm not sure. I want to kind of take a look at it. I still have the image. I can just have it printed again and adjust the colors on it. So but that's the general idea. Um, the ship is facing this way. It's heading towards Jupiter, and then we're going to have the, plant, the the moons in the foreground because that's where it'll pass by. They're probably not lined up like this in in real space, but um, but this is the right order of them. <clears throat> Let's see if I remember now. Um, Callisto, Ganymede, Europa, Io's up here next to Jupiter, and then Jupiter, of course, and there's other ones, but those are the main ones. So this one would be the biggest in the foreground as we're heading towards Jupiter and then smaller, smaller, and so on. Okay, so that day is going to work pretty good. I like that. And as I said, this is like a, um, it's like a white vinyl, but it's non-self-sticking. So I'm going to put underneath it some regular black poster board and, and use that as a base. And then put this, just glue this onto it. And it just has a white back, so okay. All right, so that's coming along well, and uh, I think the concept is going to work out fantastically. Okay. All right, so I'm working on some magnet connectors to, um, to be able to put on the back of this to glue onto the command sphere. Uh, let me back up a bit. Uh, earlier in one of my earlier previous videos, uh, early in this build actually, I was talking about how I was going to do the, the batteries and the wiring and and I um, I made the back propulsion unit connectable with magnets and I was going to put the wiring through the center spine and put the batteries in the back. Um, that didn't work out. Uh, when I was gluing the spine parts together, the, uh, the two metal rods, I put a little too much 5 minute epoxy in there and basically sealed off that tube. Uh, I tried sticking a wire through it to break it loose and I just couldn't. So um, it's just as well though because uh, with the wiring now that I've gotten that done, I'm going to need more than just one set of wires or batteries. Uh, because I have the cockpit, I have the, the pod bay, and I even have other lights inside of there that are going to be needing more than one, um, more than one 3 volt coin battery, which I'm going to be using. Probably about three or four of them. Uh, which will fit in fine inside of here, but I've had to go with a different approach where I'm going to glue on the bottom of the pod bay, uh, the bottom of the, the sphere I mean. That's going to be permanently attached onto here. 
The top is going to be removable, and I'm going to have three different magnets. One at the, well, this would be the top and the two sides that will be able to secure that in place. Um, and then I can remove it, change the batteries, work on the lighting if I need to, something wrong with the wiring. So, so I came up with just a, a really simple mechanism. And they're rough, but you're really not going to see them. And it's going to be like this right here. And it's just going to snug up against the, the sides of this. And I have some sides on it. And it's going to just be flat against the surface. So then on the inside, I'm going to have another one that's secured onto the inside of the dome. And it's going to match up with this. And then it's going to match up in three key points, the top of it, the two sides that are going to hold this in place. And, um, and so that'll be removable. And so these are going to be glued in here really well. I'm going to glue them in initially and then fill all this in in the back with five minute epoxy. So that's going to be really solid. It's not going to come loose in any way. And, uh, and then that'll serve my purposes. All right, so let me work on those, get them in place, and then we'll take a look at that. All right, so I'm just doing some finishing little touches, uh, getting ready to put this all together. So uh, to make the little lines there, I thought of a few ways of doing it and finally decided to just go with some, some stripping, some very thin stripping. I think it's .010 uh, square stock. And I just glued it on to the metal in little pieces, as you can see there. And I'm doing it right there. You can see how I'm doing it on this other piece. Uh, this one's glued in permanently, so I started with that one. And it's also the one you're really not going to see because that door is going to be closed. So if I made any mistakes, like there's a little bit of glue in the middle of the, the right one there, but I'll dull that down with some flat coat. Um, and then I'll work on this one as well. This one you're going to see very well. And this one, of course, is going to extend, so I want that to be uh, probably one of the cleanest as well, because you're going to see that. So I carefully glued that onto there without getting hardly any overspill. And like I said, I'll doll that down with a flat coat. So I'm just taking little tiny pieces, dipping them into some glue on a piece of cardboard, some, some CA glue and then gluing on a piece at a time. And then sometimes as they extend like that, I'll glue it on and then I'll, once it dries, I'll flatten this down and use an X-Acto knife to snip it off at the end. Okay, all right. So I'll get these finished up and then we're gonna start putting this uh, pod bay together. Okay, all right, and there's the finished one that's gonna extend. I'll glue those onto there. Okay. All right, all right I'm starting to glue together the floor onto the pod bay. I have the back glued in place. I have the left lab side glued in place, letting that dry a bit. I'm taking my time because I want to be careful not to not to damage any of it and make sure it's sealed nice and strongly. I put some plastic stripping underneath that little piece right there, that one right, those two in the back, this one here on the left side to to give it something to sit onto and, and glue onto it as well. All right, so that's coming together well. I just have to secure the right side there, and then I want to put some glue around the bottom underneath to really solidify it in there. So, okay. All right, and here's the glued together uh, pod bay. I glued the roof down onto it, the two side walls, that little extra compartment there for the airlock. I have that in there as well. All right, went together nicely. Have my two wires coming down for the um, little control panel back by the left lab door and the, um, the workbench there in the center. All right, fantastic. I have the one uh, pod platform out that extends. I can put that back in. <clears throat> the other two are permanently attached. The little uh, extra white stripping on the ends of them. All right, looking fantastic. So now I have to start working on the lighting for the roof. 
and then get the other parts connected to it on the backs and the side over here. Okay, all right, and we'll let that dry a little bit. Start working on some ideas for the lighting. The, um, the photo etch went together really, really well. This is very well designed. I highly recommend it. Uh, Paragraphics photo etch for the cockpit and the pod bay. Um, fantastic product. And it was a great uh, palette or template for me to use to add all the detail that I added. Um, but it is metal to metal. So it went together well. I glued it with some uh, CA glue. But uh, there's just a little bit of light leak coming through the edges <clears throat> where it connects. So what I did <clears throat> is I first put down some flat white because uh, I didn't want the black to show through with the white interior along that edge. Even though there was glue there, it was still clear glue. <clears throat> so I put down some white first and now I'm going back and I'm putting down some flat black as well as along this little wall piece. There was a lot of light leaks coming through there, but now it's not. So that part looks good. If you look over here, you can still see the light leaks at the very bottom there and certainly at the top. So those are what I'm covering up so we don't get that coming through. Okay. All right, and there's a test lighting of the pod bay. I just have the um, components taped on the top right now before I permanently glued them down just to kind of see what I'm doing there. So looking really sharp. You can see the little uh, light there on the uh, workbench with how little screen and then the light over there by the control panel. Uh, and they're getting washed out just a little bit, but the, um, the light in the pod bay is pretty cool. It's lighting that up nicely. All right. Let me just pop that inside the kit real quick, and we'll take a look at that. All right. All right so I'm just holding that in place, and uh, obviously I have a uh, um, German Gray on the outside of the command module. So, but looking pretty sweet. So like I said, you're going to see in through the center one here, you're going to see a pretty good view of that entire pod bay. I'm going to have a pod on the right side with the door closed and the left side is going to be extended or extendable with a pod on it. Alright, so looking fantastic. That's turning out really well. Okay, so I'm going to be working on the, the pod bay doors now so I can get those to, to be opened or open up. I haven't decided yet how that's going to work out, but we're going to get and wrap up this video for this week. So a lot of great progress. Um, I still need to permanently glue down the lighting for this and then uh, add the other components as well. I still have to do the lighting for the, um, the maintenance corridor, which is back in that little hallway back there. So, okay. All right. So thank you to my subscribers uh, and all my new ones. So keep, uh, stay tuned. I will definitely be getting this wrapped up here in the next few weeks, um, working really hard to get it done in time for Wonderfest. All right, well, thank you, everyone, and I will see you again soon.